Does size matter? Of course it does. Hi friends of Cocktails. Today we'll talk about why smaller can sometimes be better. We're talking and making mini cocktails. Martini, old fashioned. Margarita, mojito, trying them all without getting intoxicated? It's possible. And I'll explain more reasons why it's a great idea. It's mini cocktail time. Let's start at the top. What even is a mini cocktail? It's exactly what you think it is. A smaller version of the full-sized serving. Before we mix up and serve a few cocktails, let's talk about scenarios where mini cocktails just make sense. And that goes for home cocktail enthusiasts and cocktail bars. If you're going out, that's perfect for when you'd like to try more than just one or two items for the menu, without worrying about getting drunk by the time the third drink is served. It's the same as with food. Think of a chef's tasting menu. By the end of the night, small portions add up to the perfect amount. Then there's also the financial part of trying several different options, which can stack up as well. Mini cocktails are cheaper, which is friendlier to the budget. So whether you're visiting an out-of-town bar with an amazing menu or you'd like to explore new flavors and ingredients without committing to a full-size drink, mini cocktails. Or say you're going out for lunch during work. A full-size cocktail might mean those reports don't have a chance of being finished later that day. But a half-size cocktail with a meal is a different story altogether. And then there's also the temperature. If you enjoy cocktail in a stemmed glass without ice, your drink will get warm pretty quickly. The solution? You already know it. Mini cocktails. Or maybe you just want a smaller drink. That's always a possibility. Quality over quantity. On the other side of the bar top, why does it make sense for bars? Serving a tiny cocktail to a guest can be a cocktail version of an amuse bouche, a welcoming way to get something into their hands as they check out the whole menu. Adding mini cocktails to the menus also gives bars a chance to test cocktails on a smaller scale, pun intended, before adding them to their main menu as a way of testing what might sell better. But it's also taking over as a new style of the bartender's handshake. That's usually a shot that a bartender pours for another bartender as a sign of respect and solidarity within the industry or inside the team before the start of a busy shift. And the shot can be many different things depending on the bar. Fernet Branca is probably the most well-known bartender's handshake with the company even commemorating this ritual with limited edition coins as a way of showing you're part of the fraternity. In Wisconsin, you might get a shot of Angostura bitters and the bravest of the Chicagoans will don a shot of Jepson's Malort. But in 2010, a new handshake was invented with a tiny daiquiri shot known as the snackery. It's simple, fast and delicious, but it also allows for each bar to make their own little twist on it. At Dutch Kills in New York, where the snackery was first enjoyed as a ritual to start the shift, it was actually made with pineapple. But if you want to serve a large number of mini cocktails, it's important to have them ready to go on a short notice. And one way to do that is something we've covered before. Pre-batch cocktails. What about an inspiring home mixologist? I know ingredients can be expensive and your friends would love to try your creations or even know about the classics. So why not make them a mini sampling of the Milano Torino, Americano, Negroni, Boulevardier and Desbagliato? In one fun evening, they can learn about the evolution of the Negroni cocktail family. But even with mini cocktails, make sure there's plenty of food and water for everyone as well. Mini cocktails are also great for when you're working on a new ingredient and you want to test it out in different recipes. Say you made a new cordial or shrub, or maybe you got this limited edition of chai spice tea syrup from Liber Co. and you want to see how it works in other cocktails, besides the chai thai and the chai rich coffee, which both sound delicious by the way. I think with subtle honey and citrus notes and the warming chai spice blend of allspice, ginger and cardamom, this syrup could work nicely in a gin cocktail as well. And if it doesn't, well, at least I didn't use up too much of the syrup to make a mini cocktail. So to recap, the snackery planted the seeds in the modern cocktail era, but is it a new concept? No, it's actually more of a callback to the original classic cocktails. Cocktail historian David Fondridge writes about the small glasses used at the time many of the original cocktails were created. In Imbibe, he mentioned cocktail glasses holding no more than 3 and later on 4 ounces. So what do you need to serve mini cocktails? Small glasses, of course. You probably have some at home already. Shot glasses are sometimes used for the snackery, but I've been collecting a few of these small size glasses here and there whenever I came across them at a local second hand shop. Doing that not only supports your mixology journey, but also a local business. Also, if you have glasses or tools you don't need anymore, you can donate them to the same store. That helps them again, but it can also find a second home for the things you don't need helping reduce waste. That's not only related to mini cocktails, but let's get back on track. What are some popular cocktails that work great as a mini version? At home or in a bar? Spirit forward classics are the easiest to batch, so think old-fashioned, Negroni, Martini. They are made with widely available ingredients 
which you simply mix them beforehand. But you can pre-batch sours as well, you just need to make some extra ingredients. And I've even created a calculator to help you adjust to the exact amount you want to end up with. If you want to make them without dilution, you can keep them in the freezer, or add water and keep them in the fridge. We've made the batch old-fashioned a little while ago, so let's just quickly recap how we did that. I'll give you measurements for a 700ml bottle without dilution this time, so batch together 596 grams of your choice of whiskey. Here used Irish whiskey, but bourbon or rye are great choices as well. Follow that with 71 grams of rigid Amarara syrup. Make sure to get all of that in there. For bitters, I took off the dasher top and added 12 grams of Agnostura aromatic bitters. And I like to add a drop or two of saline solution to most of my cocktails to enhance the flavors, just like you would with food. Here I'll add 12 drops. With that, it's ready to be bottled and placed in the freezer. Let's grab a small tumbler glass and pour ourselves a mini old fashioned. As always, with a pre batch cocktail, you just pour the cocktail into a chilled glass, this time over small ice cubes. We'll give it a stir to add a bit of dilution as well. Then garnish with an orange peel, and that's it. Cheers! Your mini cocktail is ready to be enjoyed, and it's every last bit as good as its big brothers. But with the mini version, you'll be ready to enjoy something else after you finish it. And since we haven't batched a martini cocktail yet, let's do that now. I'm using a 330ml bottle this time, which is more than enough for a few mini cocktails. But check out the batch cocktails calculator on my website if you need to adjust the volume. We're making this without dilution as well, so I'm starting with 285ml of Tankara number 10. Don't you just love it when you have exactly the right amount left in the bottle? In our case, there's 266 grams. Follow that with 45 mils of Novo de Dante Purgatorio Extra Dry Vermouth, that's 47 grams. And as I showed in the Martini Old vs New episode, I prefer my martinis with bitters added, using what I call the Martini bitters, a mix of lemon, orange, grapefruit and spruce tips bitters. If that's not available, I'd go with orange bitters. Add 12 dashes, which is 5 grams. There's no excuse not to make saline solution however, as this is just 12 grams of salt dissolved in 80 grams of water. Add 12 drops or 1 gram. The ABV in the bottle will be high enough that this won't freeze in your typical freezer, but it will be nice and chilled when you're ready to serve it. So grab your mini martini glass and pour in your chilled cocktail. I'm adding 1 and a quarter of an ounce or 37 and a half mils of our batch martini. Make sure you still have room for dilution. Aim for 40% of water, which in this case is half an ounce or 15 mils. This is water from the fridge, and with our freezer martini this cocktail is nicely chilled. All it needs is the garnish. So people say you can go with a lemon peel or an olive. I say spray it with lemon essential oils. Then discard the peel and add the olive. Leave a little and give the cocktail a quick stir while you add it. Cheers! One thing I always love about a mini martini is that I don't have to rush enjoying this wonderful, bright, boozy cocktail, because I know it will be cold all the way to the last sip. The olive just gets you ready for the next cocktail. If you want something more refreshing, you can actually batch sour cocktails too. Super juice is the answer for quick and easy margaritas that will taste as good as fresh for days. Here's how I made a batch margarita. I used a 2 1 1 ratio of tequila, Cointreau and lime super juice, plus a touch of agave syrup and a little saline solution. Start with 312 grams of Blanco tequila. Follow that with orange liquor, 174 grams. Same volumetric amount of lime super juice, differ slightly on the scale, so add 172 grams. And to balance the cocktail, a bit more sweetness with agave syrup. Lastly, 1.3 grams of saline solution. You can just add 20 drops, but that's easier. We're not adding dilution here either, since we'll shake the cocktail before serving it. To add that aeration, you want in a sour cocktail, but even so, place it in the fridge, not the freezer. Once you're ready to make the cocktail, just take the bottle out and pour a small amount of our margarita into a chilled shaker. Give it a quick shake, then strain into a mini coupe glass. Garnish with the lime wheel, which looks huge in this case. And the mini margarita is done. Salute! It's refreshing, bright, sour, sweet and just salty enough. A real mini treat, but we have space for more. And that will be a summer favorite, the mojito. To batch it, you'll first need to make the clarified lime and mint cordial, which I've shown how to make on two occasions already, so I'll just link that in the description. And up here, I'm going for 3 parts rum to 2 parts lime and mint cordial. Start by measuring out 400 grams of white rum, Plantation 3 Stars or Havana Club 3 Year are both great options. Then instead of scooping the sugar or measuring out syrup, juicing the lime and muddling the mint, just add the lime and mint cordial, 320 grams. And the last thing that goes in the bottle, saline solution, 20 drops 
or 1.3 gram. As far as the batch mojito goes, that's it. Once it's cold enough, take it out of the fridge and you're ready to serve it in two simple steps. Add ice cubes into a small Collins glass. Pour in the mojito mix and top it up with soda water. For garnish, spank a mince brick on the glass and place it in your mini hito. Cheers! This one is so simple, fast and delicious that you'll have to try really hard not to pour more than just one. But this is a mini cocktail, so we can try something else. And if we go back just a few weeks, Panda & Sons is making a very cool addition of batch cocktails with suppression. This technique was created by Ian McPherson to use the power of freezing to extract flavors and infuse a cocktail which you then just train, pour and serve and enjoy. Cheers! We've made Panda & Sons Ability Cocktail and a suppressed Manhattan, so check those out here. And now with my last cocktail of the day, I'd love to hear what cocktails you think might work in their mini version. Next week I'll be back with a new craft cocktail that will have you licking your fingers. Until then, cheers!